Good morning, Algebra 1 students. Let me just clarify what I meant by showing your work when graphing this, because it's actually quite easy to graph this on a calculator and then just, you know, sketch it like this. But let's, let me show you some precision and what I mean when I say show your work. Uh, so let's see, the first thing to consider is that this here, remember that these two components here, what's being added and subtracted, tell me about the vertex. So that's important, the vertex. The vertex, of course, is the corner of this shape. Uh, and let me point out one other thing in just a second here. So we know that the vertex here is negative six. It's the opposite of what I see inside and exactly what I see outside there. So it's the opposite inside of the absolute value. Now, let me point out this thing here. The key thing about absolute value is that we know that this tells me the shape. Just like if I had x squared, that too would tell me the shape. It's the square part that would tell me that I have this shape here. Or if I just had this, 3x plus 2, well, this right here, just the x by itself, or more specifically, x to the power of 1, tells me that I'm going to have a line. So there's something important about each of these functions that tell me the shape, right? And so in this case, because I have the bars, it's an absolute value. So therefore, I know the shape is a v-shape. Now, more specifically, because of this number in the front, like we call that, that's my a, we know because it is positive, it opens upward. So it's exactly like, or you know, similar to this. It's a V-shape as opposed to being a, an upside down, so like a rooftop. Okay, next, the a also tells me the slope, the slope. And when I say slope, specifically, I mean it goes up one, but then it goes right and left three from the vertex, from the vertex. So these are all the important things. So actually writing this stuff down is part of showing the work. And now let's actually do some of the uh, graphing here. So um, I know that I am going to be negative one, excuse me, negative six, negative one. Let me just graph real quick. Where's negative six, negative one? Well, that lives way over here. Negative six, negative one is, is somewhere way over there. So, uh, and even farther that way, which means I don't really need this right here or this right here or much down there, okay? So I do need this window over here. So when I do the graph, I'm going to give myself a lot of space to the left and up. I don't need a lot of space uh, in quadrants one, four, or in down below here. Okay, now I'm gonna always set a, a scale of some kind, right? So uh, here I'm gonna be negative two, negative four, negative six. That might be a problem because my point's gonna be right there. Um, so that actually helps out. Uh, I've established it already. And here's a negative two here, and here's a positive two. So I'm counting, in this case, each of my grid is one. Now, so where's my vertex? Negative six, negative one lives right here. Okay, boom, done. Now here's where I'm showing my work. I'm doing this right here. I'm going up one, right one, up one, right, excuse me, three. Up one, right, three, up one, right, three three, and I'm doing the same thing from the vertex, up one, left three, up one, left three. Now this one's off grid, so I probably don't even need to include that one, but when graphing this, now again, use a straight edge if you have a hard time getting that as straight as possible, and graph, 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 graph. Now this one's gonna go off, so I'm just gonna use the arrow, and I'm not going to uh, use this point over there. Okay, so this would be a good scale. This is it. So notice all the components that I'm showing my work. Number one, I'm describing it here. And number two, these points tell me that you're using this slope. So I expect to see points like this. All right, I hope that helps. Be well.